Ladies and gentlemen, this is Walter Smith and uh, another program in the series Community Camera. I'm very happy uh, to share with you today the last in our series of visiting lecturers. It's been a very interesting three days on campus. We've had uh, very good attendance. We've had very broad exposure of uh, this, the last of Corning Community College's 1979-80 Visiting Scholar Series. I'm very happy to welcome as my guest today Dr. Ralph Abernathy. Thank Welcome. You. How have you enjoyed your stay in Corning, sir? Well, I've enjoyed it uh, immensely well. It has certainly been a rewarding experience for me to have had the opportunity to meet with uh, high school students and to meet with uh, college students and to meet with faculty. Uh, it's just been most motivating and stimulating. It has done so much for me. It has been a very, very uh, uh, busy schedule, but it has been most fruitful indeed. And I'm delighted that I uh, had this opportunity to discover uh, that all of New York is not Manhattan. Mm -hmm. There's quite a difference, quite yes. a difference when you get up to this part of the state. Well, we have kept you busy, and, but you look as though you, you've held up pretty well under the... Uh, you were over to some of our uh, classes in Elmira Correctional Facility, too, I think. Oh, yes. I had the opportunity to, to visit the Elmira Correctional Center and, uh, and to speak there before one of the uh, college classes. It was most inspiring. To see, uh, to see men who have, who have completed their college work, yeah. several of them, since being there in the institution. Uh, well, it's just been a very good week, and I'm well, glad to know. Glad to hear you uh, say that. Yes. We're very proud of our program over at the uh, Elmira Prison because we feel it's really added a dimension there that, that uh, the men there badly needed. And we're, yes. we're pleased we're able to do that. Yes. Well, your, uh, your talks here uh, have brought up some interesting themes that I thought we might get back to today, more or less by way of summarizing some of the things you've talked about. I sense uh, two interwoven themes as you talk about uh, America into the 80s. On the one hand, you have pointed out some of the continuing problems as you see them, things that still need to be done. Uh, and certainly you've done that very pointedly and very uh, bluntly on occasion. On the other hand, you don't seem to be, you don't seem to be pessimistic about the future. Do you really see most of these working out successfully? Well, uh, I have to be uh, <coughs> Excuse me. an optimist, and uh, I do believe that we shall overcome. I'm not at all pleased, as you know, with the uh, present administration in dealing with the inflation and in dealing with the high unemployment rate that exists, especially in the black and poor communities. With our young people in the black community, it is in excess of 50 percent in some areas. Well, not, among young blacks. Yes, especially. that's yeah. right. And I'm not at all pleased with, uh, uh, with the fact that we have not uh, created jobs with dignity and worth for all Americans. Uh, this grieves me greatly. But I do believe that the American people can be shaken out of their lethargy and complacency and that they will uh, elect the president and elect men and women to the Congress of the United States that will do something about these situations. We have advanced so far uh, in the technological field. 
We, we have gone so far in the space program. We have gone to the moon, and now we are reaching out for Mars. And uh, how is it that we could make these great strides uh, in the scientific and technological world, and yet at the same time have these pockets of poverty, and have people going to bed hungry and waking up hungry, not having the bare minimum necessities of life. How can we afford uh, for the wealth of corporations uh, to, to proceed within our economy, making vast and enormous profits and the average American citizen, middle class, middle income Americans having to bear the tax load and to carry the tax burden. I believe that the American people are going to rise up and they are going to demand something of their elected officials. Well, you, uh, you at one point, I think, if I am quoting you correctly, you said you felt you should apologize for having supported Carter in the last presidential election. So I, I take it that whatever happens, you're not planning to support him again. Is that, is that correct? Well, you have quoted me correctly. I do owe the American people an apology because I was the first black national leader uh, to come out for President Carter in 1975. And I actively campaigned for him. But he has not kept his campaign promises. I don't think that he can keep them. I don't think that he can deliver. And I think that we ought to retire him now, and uh, we ought to elect uh, uh, Senator Ted Kennedy. I am you still feel there's yes. a, a chance of that happening? Yes, I, I still feel that there's a chance. Uh, I'm going to leave here now, and I'm going uh, to Texas uh, on Saturday when I would be there campaigning for him. And I would not be there if I did not mm -hmm. believe that he has, has a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be tragic for our nation if we do not re elect the right person as it, the president. In most r recent elections, the statistics I've seen show that the black community has overwhelmingly, sometimes the percentages are in the 80 to 90 percent range, have voted for the Democratic Party in national elections. Uh, and and while there is a potential, a great potential power in that kind of block vote, some have suggested that the Democrats now take the black vote for granted That's right. and that the Republicans, on the other hand, have given up uh, on getting it and that therefore uh, perhaps there isn't the leverage that the black vote would otherwise expect to have. Yeah, you're eminently correct. Uh, uh, we have voted uh, with a party. And I don't think that we ought to vote anymore with a party. We have to vote with the man, with the plan, mm -hmm. and not for the party. And uh, we have got to uh, find this man. Unfortunately, I only see one candidate uh, in the Republican Party whom I feel is sensitive to the needs of black people and poor people and will do something about really uh, putting our nation back on the right course. Uh, and I don't think that he will get the Republican nomination. Uh, but Mr. Anderson is a very fine man and oh. a very able man. Well, what would happen? What would your strategy be if, uh, if Senator Kennedy is not successful in pulling some kind of last-minute uh, miracle and, and getting the nomination, and if Anderson runs as an independent, uh, and, and, and let's say the three candidates, I know you're still hopeful for Kennedy, but let's say the three candidates did turn out to be Carter, Reagan, and Anderson as an independent, then what would you do? Well, I would have to do a great deal of soul searching, uh, and uh, I don't know if I can mm -hmm. accurately say what I would do at this particular point, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm most fearful that I would uh, end up uh, voting for Mr. Anderson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
as an independent. Of course, in American politics, uh, independents, third party candidates, characteristically haven't uh, done very well. But on the other hand, I suppose, I suppose a very large vote for Senator Anderson, even should he fall short of winning, would at least be interpreted as a, an important uh, a pressure for the future, wouldn't it? Yes, and not only that, but uh, uh, if he does get uh, a very large vote, it's a strong possibility that the election could be thrown into the Electoral yeah, College. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, and uh, that's a of course this would be a different ball game, yeah. could be a different ball game uh, altogether. Mm -hmm. You come, of course, your tradition uh, and your, your original basis of leadership, of course, sprang from the, uh, the church, from the religious community, and in that you follow uh, Dr. King's footsteps. And I, I just heard you very recently, within the last hour or so, continuing to say that you feel progress must be obtained through nonviolent means. That continues then to be a very strong part of your message. It certainly does. Uh, it is a part of every message that I deliver simply because it is a part of my life. It is a part of my ministry. I feel that the philosophy of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, if followed to its ultimate conclusion, will end up with a blind society and a toothless generation. So we have to end the vicious cycle of violence somewhere in order that mankind may live. Do you see the some people have questioned the viability of the, the churches to continue to play a leading role in some of these social, economic, and political movements. Do you feel that the church still does have a, a vital role to play? Well, the church certainly has a very significant role. It is not playing the role now that it should play, nor the role that it played during the 50s and the 60s. Uh, people look to their churches, especially in the black community. Uh, and we look to our pastors. Uh, if you look back at the leaders of the civil rights movement, uh, most of them have been black preachers. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., Reverend C.K. Steele, Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, and of course, myself. Uh, uh, I am a minister. Uh, uh, Benjamin Hooks, who now heads the NAACP, is a minister and the new president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The Reverend Joseph E. Lowry is a United Methodist minister. And uh, I think that the church will remain a very alive and vibrant force for good in our civil human rights uh, movement. What, in your opinion, are the, the major immediate goals for the uh, civil rights movement in general and perhaps for the black community in particular? Uh, in the sense of if, if, you, if you wanted to pick out certain specific changes you'd like to see in the next few years, what would they most likely be? Well, I think that the goals uh, certainly uh, would come first in economics. I want to see blacks uh, own uh, a stake within the power structure of our society. I know that we have some tellers and banks and we have uh, some branch managers and so forth, but I want to see us deal with this whole question of economics. We have done amazingly well in the political arena. Uh, I would like to see a, a kind of a changing of our educational system. That is, the building of more technical schools and community colleges, because everyone cannot afford to go away uh, to school. And then people ought to be trained for skills because that's where the living is now. Uh, plumbers and uh, uh, 
electricians and technicians that can take care of business and that can assume responsibilities. I'm thinking of your one of your anecdotes in your uh, talk Wednesday. You're, you pointed out that the rewards for plumbers, for example, and some of these other technical skills are really uh, quite uh, high. Oh, I should say so. I'm a living witness of that fact. Uh, because if a plumber come to your house today, of course, uh, uh, if you aren't careful, you'll get all of your money just as he got all of my money in Atlanta uh, a few few weeks ago. Uh, I, I, I want to see this type of education instituted even at the high school uh, level. And above all, I want us to wipe out poverty and uh, to destroy once and for all racism and know that we are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, not for some, but for all. In spite of this tremendous gap that you, and I agree, still remains, uh, do you believe that we have made significant progress? Oh, yes, we've made some progress. And certainly there has been change. But when it comes to the masses of people, uh, we have not made the progress that we should have made. Uh, the very mass person today is, is not much better off than he was during the 50s and the 60s. Uh, we own less land today because people moved away from those farms I hadn't thought and that. they came to Philadelphia and the great urban centers looking for the utopias. And now they're coming back south, but they sold those homes, so we don't own the land anymore. And not only that, but when it comes to power, uh, we don't own political power, we don't control economic power. And control over capital in a capitalistic society, it, it, is, it is those who control capital who, who do set the priorities for sure. the economic life. Very definitely so. Well, we've had in the past, going back to, to Garvey and others in the past history, we have had uh, movements for black capitalism, as it sometimes was called, uh, that uh, you're suggesting ought to be perhaps one of the major thrusts then today. No, not black capitalism. Oh, okay, uh, then because, how do you uh, see as it? As Mr. Nixon talked about black capitalism, Richard Nixon, our yeah. former president, uh, Remember talked about more. black capitalism. I am as much against black capitalism as I am against uh, white capitalism. Uh, I just think that the capitalistic system robs the masses of people. And we have got to have a society that is geared toward making livelihood for all of the citizens within our country. There are certain things that ought to be socialized uh, within our society that ought to be owned by the government or by the state, uh, but uh, I think I, I would like to see every man with a job. I'd like to see us do away with the welfare system completely uh, and, and give aid only to those who are too old to work, those who are too young to work, and to those who are disabled, but provide a job with dignity and worth for every able-bodied American in the private sector of our country. And in order to do that, we have got to provide incentives for private industry. I think any kind of welfare program that results, as ours has, to, uh, to people of both races having, uh, having a status as welfare recipient through several generations is basically a, a, a demeaning kind of yes. system. Mm -hmm. Most demeaning. But going back to capital, if 80% if or more of our investment 
and, and, and the giving out of jobs and the deciding where the jobs are is in the private capital segment, then isn't it necessary for blacks to, to, to be in positions of, of power in, in industries, banks, uh, businesses, in order to, to be able to have that kind of influence? Well, this is the reason why I think it's so very, very necessary uh, for uh, a, a more equal distribution of wealth within our society because we do not have the power. We don't have the power. We don't have the positions of influence and prestige uh, within the banks and in the industrial complex of America. And when you just stop to think that black people made this country, were brought here against our will, we were tricked aboard the ships on the shores of Africa, and Lerone Bennett in his book entitled Before the Mayflower tells us that millions of blacks didn't even make the voyage. Many of them were thrown overboard to the hunger shocks in the waters of the Atlantic Ocean. And others, of course, were thrown overboard simply because uh, the shipmasters were angered over the fact that uh, disease had broken out, and yet there were no medical supplies on these uh, ships. Mm -hmm. Yet we have remained loyal to this country, and we are the largest minority within our society. We have remained loyal to the country. We helped to build it and to make it what it is today, and I think that we all ought to be free to enjoy the blessings of this land. That certainly should be the goal, I think, of every American. Do you see any problem, uh, Dr. Abernathy, with respect uh, to specifically the black community with the fact that um, we're told, for example, that by the end of this century, which isn't that far away now, the Hispanic-speaking uh, population may be the largest minority. Is that going to create any problems as you see it? No, I certainly don't think that it will create any, any, any problems. Uh, the Hispanic uh, population, our community, our brothers, our sisters, and, uh, and they, they are growing and they are contributing to the development of our nation and they have every right uh, to be counted. And I, I, I don't think that it will create any problems at all. I think that we can build an alliance between the Hispanic community and the black community, which will be most motivating and stimulating for everyone. It will be quite a challenge. Uh, uh, and I know this is your thrust. I, I, from the Poor People's March and even before that, you're, you're putting can more and more emphasis on the have-not groups, whether they be white or black or Hispanic, right. working together. But that will take tremendous leadership because it, it, even within that, the black subsection of that uh, larger grouping, there is some considerable division of leadership, isn't, isn't there today? There is considerable... Um, different thrusts among the leaders. Yes, certainly, certainly you have leaders heading the NAACP and PUSH and uh, uh, Southern Christian Leadership Conference and many other organizations across uh, the length and breadth uh, of this country. But uh, at the very same time, I think that everyone will be able and is willing uh, to subdue his own individual wish in order that the wishes of a larger and broader section representative of the black community may be observed and carried out. One of the things that we who are in the co community college movement feel happy about is that in the last, oh, say 20, 25 years that community colleges have been developing, we are educating primarily groups of the population of all races that were not going to college before and without the community colleges would probably still not yes. be going to college. 
And this is very, very healthy uh, indeed. I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see this community college here. And I certainly hope that everything uh, will work for the good of it and that it shall continue to stay in, uh, to teach even unborn generations the truth. When you uh, leave here today and you say you're going down to Texas, um, you alluded to some, uh, you are going to be doing some work then uh, in the immediate future for uh, Senator Kennedy. Yes, I have been doing it all along and I will continue uh, to do it. Uh, I will be uh, speaking tonight in Tulsa uh, and of course tomorrow I will be there trying to influence the people who will be elected uh, or have been elected uh, to, to organize the caucuses and, uh, and say finally uh, who the delegates will be. And I will be right there uh, working for the senator. Are you in communication with the senator on his campaign? Are you uh, working with him or, or his staff on it then? Oh, yes, I, I'm working on it. Uh, I, I'm not a paid uh, worker. This is something that I feel that I must do for unborn generations and for the generation of young people that are with us today. I'm very pleased to do it. Uh, I just feel that it's a great necessity. Mm -hmm. Do you feel most of the uh, black uh, leaders and the, the black Americans are leaning in that direction? Well, uh, we're divided at that point. Uh, some uh, are still, unfortunately, uh, with Mr. Carter. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there are any uh, with Mr. Reagan. Uh, very, very few. I would judge that. Uh, uh, but there are some who are with Mr. Carter. Mm -hmm. I suppose it was a great disappointment for you because I know many black leaders, and I, I think certainly you were among them, felt that um, Perhaps Mr. Carter, coming from the South, but coming from a new South, might have actually a closer understanding and closer working relationship with the black community. Yeah, this had been our hope. And, and Mr. Uh, Young, of course, had uh, supported him. And uh, This had been our hope. But uh, I think that things uh, went in another direction. But we're going to make amends for it. I think uh, that the next president of the United States uh, will be more sensitive to the needs of all of the people in our country and in our land. Well, I hope so. I, I feel that the lack of leadership in a time when there is so much that needs to be done is a, is a, a catastrophe because you, uh, I think it can make all the difference in the world, having the proper leadership. Yeah, you're so very, very right. Leaders set the tone. Mm -hmm. And they, they not, uh, they, they give people direction and they also raise their hopes and they, and they give them the optimism I think they need to That's succeed. right. And I think perhaps you've given us some of that here at Corning during your visit. And I want to say to you again on behalf of the community and the college community that we certainly have profited from it and we wish you well on your travels and thank you again. Thank you very much and I appreciate you inviting me Good. to come to Corning. We hope you're in the community, community again College. sometime. Thank, Thank you. you. My guest has uh, been Dr. Ralph Abernathy, uh, who has been here talking about America into the 80s as one of our visiting scholars. We hope you had a chance to hear him in person. For those of you who didn't, we thank you for joining us on Community Camera.